In this episode of INN CEO Talks, we're talking about lithium with European Lithium Executive Chairman Tony Sage. Tony, welcome. Thanks for joining me. Thanks very much for having me on. Well, it's my pleasure. I'm quite interested in your Wolfsburg project in Austria because it looks like it has really promising potential. And as we know, the market, especially in the EU, is going to need reliable, long-term, high-grade supplies. Let's talk about uh, that project and then we'll come back and talk about the company a little bit uh, beyond that. Okay, yeah, look, the Wolfsburg project uh, is quite unique. Uh, in Europe, uh, a lot of the lithium mines are at the exploration stage. So this, this mine uh, was built back in the uh, 80s uh, by the Austrian government. So all the, the, the work has been done. If we were going to do this project today, we would have to uh, get environmental approval and spend about $100 million. Uh, but they did all the work back in the 80s. The license is in perpetuity. So uh, we can now uh, access that mine and start mining immediately. In fact, in 2017, uh, we mined it and took out 1,500 tonnes, which is a massive advantage in the lithium industry because uh, we were able to build a pilot plant and put 300 tonnes of the material through the pilot plant, uh, which gave us the results that we were looking for, that it's high-grade battery uh, ore and it's 99.9% uh, 6% that we can get to a hydroxide product. This is an underground uh, mine, isn't it? Because I think one thing for uh, potential investors, they're looking at, okay, what is the geological structure and what is the process that you're going to go through to be able to extract that ore? Yeah, look, uh, very, very simple underground mining techniques are used all around the world. Uh, when they built it, they actually <laughs> overbuilt. They, they spent more money than they needed to. Uh, so the size of the caverns uh, that are underground are huge. Uh, when we decided to mine back in 2017, uh, it was quite easy for us to, to find the seam of the ore body and then take the ore out. So yeah, underground, uh, believe it or not, we're under a ski field and we have a very, very good rep uh, 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 relationship with that uh, uh, ski field. They've got their lodges there. so. Um, when it's not ski season, we can actually use that for our workers. So very good relationship. Uh, the whole of uh, Austria uh, is used to mining. Um, during uh, World War II, in fact, uh, a lot of the uh, heavy industry was built in that area of Austria. So a lot of the infrastructure is still there. Uh, in fact, 45 kilometres away is the city of Graz. Uh, that hosts the largest Samsung battery factory, would you believe? Uh, how lucky we are to have that so close to us. 45 kilometres the other way is an uh, operating tungsten mine. So not only uh, do we have a, a, a mine that can operate immediately without much spend, uh, we also are in an area that is used to mining and has heavy industrial um, aspects to that particular area. So as a company, is it your plan to build out and mine the site? Or are you looking to vend in with a major, uh, you know, uh, player in the lithium market? Uh, look, uh, our, our aim is to mine it. Uh, it's a very simple mining process. Uh, we're in the process now of uh, trying to acquire land nearby so we can actually put a uh, conversion plant and a hydroxide plant on it. There's not one hydroxide plant in Europe, so we hope to be the first. Mm. And uh, the old saying, you build it, they will come. So uh, if we have the first hydroxide plant in Europe, not only will we be able to source material from our own mine, but we may be able to source material uh, uh, that's uh, in nearby uh, areas. For example, 200 kilometres away, there's another company uh, that has a, uh, a lithium mine. Uh, they haven't decided yet what to do, but if they actually get to operate, we may be able to buy their concentrate and put it through our hydroxide plant. Uh, the Austrian government is very keen for us to build uh, hydroxide plants so they can actually uh, entice uh, BMW, Mercedes, um, maybe Tesla to build a, a gigafactory nearby the hydroxide plant so we can have a, a mine right through to the, the battery solution for the Austrian government. And that's the way they want us to go. Uh, in the end, all we can do is get the mine up and operating, build the hydroxide plant and see what happens. 
So we see lithium prices continuing to rise. Uh, how is the ratio between the market price and your cost of production? Uh, we completed a DFS, uh, sorry, a PFS, a uh, pre-feasibility study uh, in uh, 2018. The cost structure then was about $7,500 per tonne uh, of hydroxide to produce the hydroxide. Uh, right now, believe it or not, the hydroxide price is around 69000 US dollars a tonne. So it's a massive, uh, massive profit margin. We don't see 69,000 as being sustainable uh, over the long term. Uh, when we do our definitive uh, feasibility study, or some people in America call it a bankable feasibility study, uh, we're probably going to use an average price over the life of mine of about 25,000. But as you can see, so that's still a, a, a huge uh, profit margin. So it's looking pretty exciting. You've got a, a known resource. What what are your next steps here over the next quarter? Uh, next quarter, look, uh, it's very, very uh, exciting for us. We've got to finish the bankable feasibility study. Uh, we think that will finish uh, within the next three or four months. Uh, it's been done independently. As you know, all uh, bankable feasibility studies have to be done that way. Uh, by then, we will have a rough estimate of uh, where our costs are. And then we go out and look for uh, our financing. Now, how we do that is going to be exciting. We've already been in contact with large auto manufacturers in Europe that want to partner with us. Uh, we're very lucky. Our board's made a very wise decision in not uh, signing away our offtake early. So we can offer any automobile com uh, company all the offtake from the, from the mine. And if you look at the uh, progress of the European uh, companies, uh, in EVs, they need the hydroxide as quickly as possible. So we're in a very, very good position over the next three or four months to partner with someone. So I'm sure that there's going to be a number of investors right now who are going, okay, I want to stay on top of uh, your story and where you're going. Um, when can I come back and get updates? Uh, look, at, at any time, our um, uh, website will be updated uh, frequently so they can do it that way. We're now not only listed in Australia, we're listed in Germany, and we've all recently gone on to the OTC in the States. Uh, I am coming through uh, the States uh, in June uh, to end up at the PDAC conference in Toronto uh, on around the 13th, 14th, 15th of uh, June. So, yeah, we're, we're, we're uh, very accessible. Um, I'm accessible at any time, believe it or not, even in Western Australia where I'm from, uh, myself and my IR person are up uh, at 1 a.m., 2 a.m., 3 a.m. to take calls from uh, US investors uh, on the East Coast. So it's been a, a hell of a ride uh, to do that, to get up. But look, we want to get the story out. We're very, very cheap uh, at the moment, uh, our, our stock price. Um, and that's because uh, a lot of people uh, see us being in Europe and underneath the ski field that, oh, maybe they won't be able to get to operate. But that's far from the case. The, the Austrian government and the local authorities are pushing us to get uh, this up and going as soon as we can. So is your number one message then to investors, don't be fooled by the stock price. We've got uh, an exceptional opportunity here. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I could understand the, the uh, skepticism being underneath the ski field, being in Austria, first world country where Europe doesn't really like mining. But uh, I think you've got to do a lot of delving and the investors have got to be very shrewd and look at Austria as, alone. It is been, has been a mining country uh, and they are heavily industrialized in the particular area where our mine is. So yeah, just ignore all the uh, red flags that you do see, uh, especially with some of the, our friends in Europe in the lithium space uh, where mining has been well, local opposition to the mining has been quite strong. Uh, we've been there now since 2016. We've had no local opposition. Uh, in fact, in only encouragement from not only the authorities, but from the local people. Well, you cannot deny the need for lithium, especially in Europe. I mean, they're moving faster than in the United States in mandating that automobile manufacturers move towards EVs uh, at a rate that current lithium supply can't meet. A hundred percent. Look, uh, I won't name the company, but one of the uh, uh, automobile companies that are close to us and, you know, we're in the heart of Europe. So within 500 kilometres, there's BMW, Mercedes, um, Audi, just name three. Um, 
down south a little bit, there's Fiat. So uh, we're very close to a lot of the manufacturers, but just one of them needs 30,000 tonnes of hydroxide per annum from 2025, just to meet their, their demand. Now, our output from our mine will only be 11,000 tonnes, but if we build a hydroxide plant, we can actually take ore from other mines uh, and produce probably double that. But uh, at the moment, our plan is just to look after our own mine, uh, find a partner and uh, finish the DFS as quickly as possible so we can start our financing round. Well, this is an exciting time for you. You've got a great project. Looks like you have a wonderful team and a fantastic opportunity uh, meeting the needs of uh, the, our conversion to a green energy economy. Thanks for your time today, Tony. No problem. Thanks for having me on again.